Hello, my name's Paul Hodkinson and I'm a lecturer on the Media and Communications course at the University of Surrey. Um, you are watching a bite-sized taster of a lecture that's focused upon personal listening devices and I've sort of called it bubbles of isolation with a question mark and this forms part of uh, one of the topics that we cover in my uh, final year module called Music, Media and Society. So um, there have been a number of different music devices over the years, um, starting with kind of cassette players, then going to sort of CDs and mini discs and now into sort of um, uh, iPods, iPhones and, and similar devices of that kind. Um, and they've not gone without um, kind of worries and criticism along the way, coming from sort of various quarters. So, you know, journalistic stuff about sort of social isolation. Are we sort of isolating ourselves from one another here by spending so much of our time with headphones off, sectioning ourselves off in, in sort of personal bubbles, if you like? So uh, here we've got a quote that sort of talks about atomization by little white boxes and cell phones, society without the social. So is this having a, you know, profound sort of impact on our ability to communicate with other people and our connection with other people. Um, as anyone who's spent time sitting in a Starbucks will tell you, the customers who were there use iPods to minimise the possibility for social interaction. Um, so, so again, sort of a, a similar kind of thing that we're almost sort of deliberately trying to section ourselves off, perhaps by having those headphones on and avoiding kind of communication with other people, signalling to them that we, you know, we're on our own, we're in our bubble. And there's a bit of a connection to some academic work here as well. So Sherry Turkle, uh, a few years ago, wrote a book called Alone Together, where she sort of worries about, in, in general, our sort of the extent of our connection to digital devices of one kind or another that we take with us everywhere we go, which sort of music listening devices is, is a sort of good example of. Um, and she worries a bit about this notion that we're alone together, that increasingly we're sort of sat in the same room as people, sat on the same bus as people, possibly even walking with people. But we're all sort of in our own little um, social media bubble or music bubble or whatever it might be, and that that's having a sort of detrimental effect on our social lives and our identities. Another different kind of critique um, comes from a, a kind of a commentator called Christine Rosen and her worry about kind of contemporary music listening is the amount of choice that it currently gives us. So if we're sort of streaming, if we're using a sort of set of sort of downloaded files um, in, in large quantity that we can sort of play and stop and, and jump to, to whatever music we want to play at any moment that we want to play it really, that that maybe might encourage us to be intolerance of things that sound a bit different to what we're used to or a bit um, sort of more complex than what we're used to that need a bit more concentration. So we listen to something and then if it's not sort of engaging our sort of immediate interest within sort of a few seconds, we've already sort of skipped to the next thing. So she says the iPod facilitates a sampling approach to music. A touch of Verdi and Strauss can be followed by a healthy dose of Eminem and Kellis. It's up to you. And she says sampling is the opposite of savouring. So we're sort of superficially enjoying music, she's sort of suggesting there. By giving us the illusion of perfect control, these technologies risk making us incapable of ever being surprised. So we, you know, increasingly we're in a bubble in a social sense, but we're in a bubble in terms of our set of tastes and the, the kinds of things that we listen to, um, which kind of doesn't change too much in her view, because we constantly sort of, sort of listen to the same kinds of things. And whenever we hear anything that's slightly different, we, we're sort of turned off immediately and, and, and go back to something familiar. OK, those kind of negative views, though, have been sort of balanced um, also by some some perhaps slightly more nuanced studies, which sort of think of, about things in a, in a slightly more complicated way um, and think about how users are quite sort of selective and active in various ways in their use of these devices. So Michael Bull has carried out a number of studies and he sort of in, investigates this notion that that through using iPods and sort of later devices like our iPhones and so on, we're kind of carrying our, our identity in our pocket, having all of our music collection, all of our music tastes available to us at any one moment so that we can sort of pick the perfect thing that, that accompanies what we're currently doing or that accompanies how we're currently feeling. 
he also sort of explores this notion that people kind of quite actively transform their environment by by adding like a soundtrack to it so you're looking out of the window on the train or you're walking through the city and you've got this kind of visual set of cues but then you're sort of adding your own very sort of individualized quite private soundtrack to it to sort of bring it to life for yourself in your own way so the user can reorganize the sounds of the city to his or own uh, or her liking so you know we don't have to be sort of stuck with whatever sounds are around us we can sort of quite actively sort of transform our environment for our, our, ourselves by deciding what to play and when uh, another study by Nick Pryor, much more recently, um, of undergraduate students and their experience of using um, personal music players, um, also kind of focuses on kind of contradictions, I suppose. So he does talk about how a number of these people said, yes, I am trying to sort of um, put myself into a bubble sometimes when I put those headphones on. I am kind of sometimes even quite deliberately signalling to other people that, that I'm separated, that I'm doing something, that I'm listening, that I don't really want to be disturbed or talked to. Um, but there were also various sort of things that they talked about, which did indicate that, that this music listening was sort of connecting in one way or another to what he calls techno sociality. So using like an adapter to be able to, to have a friend listen as well at the same time as you with two sets of headphones, um, sharing, listening and playlists with each other online. So, so connecting to social media whilst listening to music or after listening to music, making it very much a social experience, even if you're not talking to people face to face at the time. Um, and then lots of sort of things that people talked about, about how, you know, sometimes they would connect, have their headphones on. Sometimes they would come off for various reasons and they would be able to just sort of enjoy the sounds around them and be more sort of present in the environment. And sometimes even sort of semi connecting one headphone in to, to sort of signal I'm, I'm kind of here, but I'm, I'm kind of not maybe. Um, and, and doing that kind of sort of subtle work really to us to to um, come into and out of a bit more the environment that you're in. So just a very quick conclusion then to this sort of um, little sample. Um, so maybe this is an example of the way that certainly technologies that we use can afford particular kinds of use. They can make it more likely that we do certain things than others or that we do things in certain ways rather than others. But those outcomes are quite complicated and it does depend on cultures and individuals and the circumstances that they're in. And even individual uses aren't easy to pin down. We can't sort of simply say, you know, you're being active or you're being passive or you are isolating yourself or you're being social often it's a kind of quite a complicated mixture of the two over time okay thank you very much for watching and listening and and that's the end of this taster session